let's worship the Lord. Let's take God at his word this morning. He's trustworthy, he's faithful, and we can always take him at his word. Church, right here in the room, online, we're really excited 
to be able to worship together on this holiday weekend. How many of you have big plans for the holiday? That's what I thought. That's what I thought. Yeah. It's okay. Anybody who thinks that they says that they do, it's not totally true. Let's just all relax about it, okay? Enjoy your holiday weekend. It's great to have you here today. We're going to worship because we believe in the faithfulness of our God. Amen? That means that when, our, when we're in a, in a high season, that God stays faithful. When we're in a low season, God is still faithful. And so that's why we enter into his courts with praise, with thanksgiving, and we rejoice together. So God has given us something really special. God has given you today the voices of the people around you who are here to encourage you in worship. So what I want you to do is before we take it back and sing it again, that I'll take you at your word, I want you to turn to somebody near you and say, thank you for your voice. Thank you for your voice. I want to hear you sing. And then we're going to sing it together. I'll take you. Thank you and your word. If you said it, I'll believe it. I've seen how good it works. If you start it, you'll complete it. I'll take you at your word. If you said it, I'll believe it. I've seen how good it works. If you start Thank you that you are such a God that can be counted on, a God that we can put all of our hope in, God. And should we stand on you and you alone, you promise to strengthen us and meet us in your love and power this morning. Hallelujah.
is my firm foundation the rock on which I stand when everything around me is shaken I've never been more glad that I put my faith in Jesus come on he's never let me down he's faithful
going to come to the Lord's table together and as you came in today you might have received we hope you received um, communion elements but if you didn't our hosts are ready to serve anybody who'd like to partake in communion with us so if you didn't receive communion but you'd like to take communion today just lift up your hand one of our hosts will get that to you as quickly as possible and you won't nobody's going to miss out we practice here at New City Church what we call open communion you don't have to be a part of New City Church to take communion with us you just have to be somebody who's a follower of Jesus. So if you're preparing those, that'd be wonderful. Just get those ready right now. I have an experience that I, I think some of you could kind of relate with a little bit. It's um, when, you, when you get that piece of furniture that comes in a box. And it's amazing how that big piece of furniture fits in just that little box. But it's in, you know, many different pieces. And if you're like me, if I'm in a hurry, I didn't really budget enough time to do this for somebody at my skill level, which is, I don't know what that is. Zero, nothing, I don't know. Um, and you put it all together and uh, you, you're, you're in a hurry. You don't really pay attention to the instructions very much. You don't do what the really organized people do, lay it out you know, take all that into account and, you know, mentally prepare for the whole thing. And I, I, sometimes it's happened like this where you finish and you're left with a few parts and you're thinking to yourself, were, were these parts extras or were they really supposed to be involved in this? It seems like it's okay right now, but you skip a few steps and you can end up with, you know, some problems. And uh, there have been moments where I've had to take this thing apart in order to get things back in order the way they were supposed to because there's a certain order to things there's some steps that you're supposed to follow and if you don't you run into some issues and this is kind of where I think there's a beautiful picture that the scripture gives to us where it talks about Jesus as our cornerstone we were singing about it today Jesus the Bible says, the Apostle Paul talks about him, he calls him the chief cornerstone. Now we, 
we don't really, we're not really so familiar with that language, right? But basically, in those ancient buildings that were built with stone, the masons would begin with a chief cornerstone. It was the one that would be set first, and it was the stone in which all the other parts of the building would be built in reference to that stone. If you didn't have your chief cornerstone in place, then it was just a free-for-all, right? And you had a mess, and a potentially dangerous mess, if you will, when you're talking about stones and walls that could topple in on somebody. But when the chief cornerstone was right, and when you got that step right, you got everything else in line. Jesus is our chief cornerstone. And there have been many moments in my life where I have gone out of order in certain places. Where I've gotten the, you know, skip some steps, if you will. Has anybody else skipped some steps and run into some trouble? Okay. Yeah, yeah. What great news it is today for us to be able to say if we get that chief cornerstone right, if Jesus is in the right place, if he's the anchor of our lives, if he's set in the right place, if, if everything else in our lives is built in reference to him, then we're good. Yeah. And that's what the Apostle Paul is talking about. When we come to the Lord's table like this, we're coming to remember that. We're coming to remember that that chief cornerstone is at work in our lives simply because of grace and mercy and the goodness of God. We didn't deserve to be included in his building, if you will. Matter of fact, there's nothing really beautiful about this stone. Nothing really great to speak of. Nothing really great here. Nothing really great except that we are being built together to be a house for God. So the miracle of it is that somehow in, in, in reference to the cornerstone, there's not just a mess or a pile of stones chipping at each other and, and, and making a mess of each other. Really, if, if we're all in reference to the chief cornerstone, then we are being fitted together, the Bible says, to be a beautiful house for the Lord. So as we approach the table of the Lord today, we're going to be mindful of that. We're going to remember what God, what our place in this, what, what step we are. I'm going to invite you before we ever, before we take any, and, you know, talk about the communion elements, would you just take a moment with me and would you maybe in your own way just create a little space for yourself to reflect. The kids are being well taken care of. You, you might have had a busy weekend. You got the cookouts after this, but for just, let's just let it all, just, let's just focus for just a minute and ask the Lord to speak to our hearts right now where we are. You might close your eyes. Lord, we want to get this step right. We want you to be the cornerstone in our lives. We thank you, Lord that you've invited us by your grace to this table, to this moment of celebration and remembrance. We thank you that you've invited us by your grace to be joined together with other stones to be a house, a dwelling place for you. Lord, we recognize we don't have the same assignment as every other stone. We don't have the same placement as every other stone. We don't we're not the same as every other stone, but Lord, you have called us to be fitted together beautifully to be a house for you, to be a dwelling place for your presence. I'm going to invite you if, if there would be just a sense in you that maybe there's been some steps that have been missed and maybe there's some areas where you have gotten things out of order that you just get this big rock in place. Jesus, I want you to be the cornerstone of my life. Throughout the centuries, the Christian church has, has celebrated and remembered together at the table of the Lord. It was the one thing that Jesus said, I want you to do this together, to be mindful, to be to not forget.
So the Apostle Paul tells us that on the night that Jesus was betrayed, that he took the bread that was being shared and he broke it. He gave thanks and he broke it and he said, this is my body, which is for you. Now, they didn't know it when they were seated there, but Jesus was saying, my body is going to be broken for you. My body is going to, is about to be broken. Just, just hours later, Jesus was going to suffer. He was going to die. His body was going to be broken so that we could be whole, so that we could be fitted together to love one another in community, in family, the way that God designed for us to love one another. For, for us to be forgiven and to be made whole. So I want you to take that piece of bread that's included in there and I want you to hold it in your hands and I, we're going to pray together and just give thanks for the, the bread, which is the symbol of the body of Jesus, broken for you and me. Lord, we hold in our hands something really simple but also something very beautiful. It's the symbol of what you, what you did for us when you offered your body up. It wasn't taken from you. It wasn't something that was outside of your control, your command. It could have been a whole legion of angels that would have stepped in to save you if you'd have just said the word. You offered your own body to be broken so that we could be made whole. And we thank you for that today and we receive the bread with gratitude and with humility today. It's only because of that, Lord, that we're at this table together. It's only because of that that we have a, a hope for wholeness, not just now, but even into the future in eternal life. We praise you that you gave your life so that we could have life. Let's receive the bread with thanksgiving. You can take the cup there and prepare that. The Apostle Paul said in the same way, he took the cup after supper saying, this cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. This simple cup was the symbol of the blood of Jesus that was shed for our forgiveness the life of Jesus that was given so that we could receive mercy from God, the judgment that Jesus took so that we could find mercy. So would you hold this cup in front of you and can we just give thanks today? Lord, thank you for the blood of Jesus that was offered. It's a better blood than that old pattern that was in operation for hundreds and hundreds of years that there was the life of an animal that was given to temporarily forgive, to just cover over the sins of your people. Lord, this is a better sacrifice. And Jesus, you willingly offered your life. You shed your blood so that our sins could be covered once and for all. We praise you today, Lord, that that's your, you are a God who is bent toward mercy. You are looking to show mercy. And Lord, you, are, you will remain just. You will remain the justifier of all of us, Lord. I thank you, Lord, that you are able to do both at the same time. That you remained just and fair, but that you found a way to justify us and to forgive us of sins. You offered your own blood so that we could be forgiven. So we hold the cup in our hands and we give thanks and praise to you, God for forgiveness that is ours today through Jesus. Let's take the cup with thanksgiving. Jesus paid it all, all to him I owe. Sin had left a crimson stain. But he washed it white as Jesus paid it all, all to him I owe. Sin had 
blood left a crimson stain, but he washed it white as snow. Sing it again. Jesus paid it all. Jesus paid it all. All to him I owe. Sin had left a crimson stain. Praise the Lord, all to him I owe. When sin had left its crimson stain, he washed me white as snow. If you've been made white as snow, then praise the Lord today. God bless you. Praise God. He is good in all his ways. So I want you to do this before you're seated this morning. I want you to turn to somebody near you and say, isn't he good? Isn't he good? And then you can be seated. God bless you.